The comment or question that I get the most by far from you guys on social media and on YouTube is what is the education path for a financial advisor? If I'm in high school or I'm in college or maybe I'm looking at a second career, how do I even get started? Today, we're not only talking about how to break into the industry, but how to get yourself on the best footing as a new financial advisor. Time to think like an investor. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Josh. I am a sixth year certified financial planner and I run my own independent wealth management firm. Now, if you'd like to hear more about these sorts of things, make sure to hit that subscribe button below, hit like, and that will help us in the YouTube algorithm get these videos out to more people for free. But today I wanna to talk about how you can break into this career because for me, it wasn't that long ago. It was like seven, eight years ago that I was getting my feet wet in the education part of this business. Now, I knew the career was amazing and I knew there was a lot of great potential in addition to being a great inflation hedge. There was great room for growth. You could build your own business. You could be an entrepreneur, but you also got to deal with finance. These are all the things I wanted to do. But the problem is there's a lot of uncertainty. First of all, you're not exactly sure which exams you have to take, what licenses you have to pass, who you need to get mentored by, what internship you're going to get. There's all these different types of question marks. And in addition to that, you're not sure where your clients are going to come from, or if you're going to have any success. And you've heard about the failure rates and how not many people survive, but it's great thereafter. It's really just a big mess and you're not exactly sure where to start. So today I'm going to walk you through the traditional path, both Canada and US. Make sure you understand both because they're very similar, but there's a bit of nuance to each. But more so give you my unique spin on what's important to focus on and what is not. Now to me, there's three main goals you need to be thinking about. And there are three distinct things. First is get a credential and a license that allows you to operate in the business. That's one. Second, become self-educated and maybe wise enough to feel confident giving great advice. Those are two different things, right? And third, set yourself up to come out firing in the career to actually have success. You see, there's a difference between knowing your stuff and then acting on it and actually having success from a communication and marketing and sales and business perspective. Those are three very different things. And you know, school's gonna give you a little bit, your own self-study is gonna give you a little bit, but also self-development as an individual person is gonna get you a long way. But I wanna give you my take on where you should be putting your energy. So let's dive in. You know, for me, when I was young, I was super lucky because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in wealth management or in investment management in some capacity. And I found a way to become a certified financial planner and do what I want to do and run an independent business without having a university degree. Now, unfortunately, and it pains me to say this, if we wanna begin with the end in mind and work towards our CFP credential, that is ultimately the credential we're going to want to have to operate in the financial advisory space, especially going forward, the credentialing bodies that run the CFP designation have a massive cultural blind spot. They believe now that every single person who wants to get their CFP should have a bachelor's degree. And I think that is just obscene. Now I've done videos in the past, I don't need to go on this massive rant, but ultimately it's going to lose them a lot of business to assume that the best candidates are going to, in the future, come through the university system. Maybe in the past, sure, but the reality is as more and more people find that there's ways to give financial advice unlicensed, starting a subscription service online, or maybe doing financial advice by way of digital products, all these different things, right? They're going to realize, as I have, that a lot of the great entrepreneurial talent that's coming up in the next generations aren't so keen on going to university. They don't see the ROI, they don't understand that. So I think it's a terrible idea, it pains me to say, but the reality is, if you want to thrive in this business going forward, for as far as I can tell, at least for now, you are going to need to start with a bachelor's degree. Ugh, I just hate saying that. Now, if you already have your bachelor's degree or you're working towards one, that's great. That means you're gonna cross off this first prerequisite because that really is the first thing. Now, a lot of people comment and ask all the time, like, what should I study in school? What courses should I take? And if I had to go back and do a bachelor's degree to get my credential, I wouldn't necessarily focus on finance. I'm gonna be studying financial exams and doing continuing education for the rest of my life in that area. I might opt for four years of the softer skills. I might think about doing philosophy. I might do a psychology degree. I might do computer science. Those three for me are probably the ones that I'd find the most interesting and are also super applicable to the field without studying finance directly. You see the real wisdom or the advice that you end up giving people in this career that actually changes their life or forces them into some new pattern of action which makes a solution, it creates a better life for them. Those things aren't going to come from what you learn in a textbook. They're gonna come from the self-learning you do and your familiarity with other fields and helping relate and communicate with people. But more on that later. You've accepted the fact you need to do a bachelor's degree and maybe you've gotten started or you're complete. What's the next step? Well, the next step in Canada is called the CSC and the US equivalent is called the SIE. 
the Securities Industry Essentials Exam. In the US, this is run by FINRA. In Canada, we have something called the CSI. And this is really the foundational textbook or course you're gonna have to take in order to get into the industry in the first place. And this is something you can do before university. It's something you can even maybe study for in high school. It's something you can do while you're in university because you don't need any prerequisites. You can just go and write it. Now, you might be wondering, okay, I go to the FINRA website and I look at my state and I see a test center and where I can do this. Where do I actually study? How do I actually find the material? And the reality is you're gonna to have to probably go to some third party provider in the US. Kaplan is a great resource. They'll sell you for a couple hundred bucks a study program and the textbooks you need to succeed in that exam. In Canada, luckily, the Canadian Securities Institute, the place you do your exam, is actually going to provide those for you. Not for free, obviously, but they're going to provide them directly through the website where you go and you book your exam. So it makes it a little more convenient. Now, in terms of how this works chronologically or the order of operations or how to do all these things, we'll go over that at the end of the video. But one one thing to think about, have I started or am I thinking about doing a bachelor's degree? That's a big question. And second of all, if I want to get started really fast, get started with your CSC in Canada or your SIE in America as soon as possible. Do those ASAP. So we've got our bachelor's degree figured out. We've got our CSC or our SIE figured out. That's great. What's next? Well, this is the part where it gets a little confusing and a little upsetting is in order to advance to the next step, you need a sponsor. So in our business, you can't just start writing all sorts of exams whenever you want. Sometimes you need an employer or a sponsor, a dealer in the investment industry, to sponsor your ability to get into an exam. And that's gonna be the next step. Unfortunately, you're trying to work towards your Series 6 or your Series 7 in the United States and your CIM designation in Canada. Now the problem is you need an employer to sponsor you to take those exams. So the next piece really is either trying to find an internship, trying to find an associate position, trying to find a summer job at some institution that is going to sponsor your ability to take the Series 6 or the Series 7 or the CIM in Canada. But once you've got your internship, you actually now have to study for those exams. And so what are those really about? Well, well, the Series 6 is really about mutual funds and insurance products and things like that. And the Series 7 is all about your securities licensing, talking about stocks and individual bonds and becoming a securities broker really. And in Canada, the CIM designation essentially covers everything you would learn in your Series 6 and 7. But the great news is, is once you've completed Series 6 and Series 7 and you're with a sponsoring firm, it's pretty likely that maybe you have a job offer or maybe you've found somewhere you want to work and now you are licensed. You aren't credentialed. You don't have a CFP yet, you don't have anything like that, but you're at least allowed to operate in the business. Same thing goes for your CSC or your CIM in Canada. So to quickly run this back, bachelor's degree, SIE, get an internship, sponsored, Series 6, Series 7, or the Canadian equivalents of those things. Now lastly, once you're working in the field, it's time to start working towards your credential, your CFP. This is what we went to university for in the very beginning, and this is the ultimate designation we're working towards, so we can have some letters behind our name, a little bit more legitimacy. Now, your CFP coursework is gonna be tricky because you're gonna be grinding your butt off as a new financial advisor trying to survive, and then you're gonna have to pay for all these exams and these new courses you're gonna have to do. There's going to be a core curriculum of five or six courses you have to all pass. Now you've got the body. From there, you have to do a massive capstone project. For me, this was like a fictitious client. I had to create like an 80-page financial plan with hyperlinked spreadsheets and I had to present it to a panel of CFPs on Zoom in order to pass. And so once I passed, I could actually write my CFP exam. <laughs> once I finished the exam, then I was credentialed and I was allowed to have this nice shiny plaque on my wall. And by the way, the reason you wanna do this last is because you need three years of work experience for your CFP to go live anyways. So you may as well get your internship, start working in the business, and then work towards passing all the courses later. That way, by the time you're done all the coursework and the exams, you'll likely have two or three years of work experience and you'll be able to get that credential. Now here's the massive problem. I got my CFP and I'm like, oh, this is great, nice, I got this credential, I've been working hard for so long. And then I realized, wait a second, does this really make me like more confident in front of prospects? Does this really make me more wise and helpful in meetings to clients? Does this really make me better at my job? Sure, I have a little more legitimacy and the regulators think this is good enough for me to be working in this business, but I didn't actually feel like I was gonna have more success in the career by having that. And that's why I said, getting credentialed and licensed, being successful, these are completely different things. So there's a whole other side of this that we're gonna to have to dive into in order to become the kind of person who is comfortable giving advice to people with complex situations and being confident and having conviction in what you're saying. Now, everything I just told you about the process to get in the door could be told to you by any financial advisor or any website. Maybe this is just the least painful way to consume that information, but I wanna give you my unique spin now. The reality is I believe, and in my experience, 
Any advice you give that actually brings a light bulb to someone's brain or is an aha moment or is life changing in the course of their finances or really helping a client live a better life is not going to come from a textbook. You are never going to get the understanding you need to relate to someone and create different connections to bring them the right piece of advice. You're not gonna learn that in any of these credentialing exams. These are purely about technical knowledge that give you the base layer to work off of. To me, there's the difference between knowing something and understanding it. Understanding it at a foundational deep level where you can apply it in the correct situations or build like a lattice work of different mental connections between what someone needs and what you know. And so this might seem very abstract, but what I'm getting at here is that the quality of advice or the wisdom you give to someone is going to come from your self learning. It's gonna come from reading the foundational books in finance, starting with you know Rich Dad, Poor Dad, moving on to the Little Book of Common Sense Investing, moving on to Intelligent Investor, moving on to Security Analysis, working your way up from the very simplest and most foundational books into complexity, building yourself a base that all of this can actually rest on. The self-learning, becoming an autodidact, the learning that you go through to get real answers about how to solve a real problem in the real world, as opposed to just bullet points showing you how different tax strategies work. You need to understand all these financial strategies, but more importantly as an advisor, but how to communicate them through storytelling and a really convincing and compelling narrative. And that's the thing you're just not gonna get in any textbook or any of these exams. It's something that you're going to have to do on your own by consuming the best industry podcasts, the best industry videos, being here on YouTube, getting involved in finance, Twitter, reading white papers, diving into the foundational investment and financial planning texts. The reason these are best-selling books is because they have great stories that our minds can latch onto. When we're given paragraphs of technical knowledge, sure, we can try to memorize that, but it only really becomes part of us and something we can impart on others when it has emotion and storytelling in it that allows us to become great advisors. We can regurgitate those emotions, regurgitate those stories, and we can link them to other ideas in our head. This all sounds very abstract. What I'm getting at, what's gonna separate you from every other advisor out there is the self-learning that you do, or else you're just a cog in a wheel. You're the same as everybody else. You've taken the same exam. Now, for more on this, feel free to head over to the reading list on my personal website. It'll show you some of the places you should start if you haven't read those books already. And from there, whatever you find curious, jot it down and follow the rabbit hole and learn everything you can. Really immerse yourself to the point where you can communicate ideas back to other people rather than just regurgitating what you learned in a course. Okay, so we know how to become credentialed and licensed. We've kind of walked through that. Now, we also know what separates a good advisor from an average one. It's the self-study, it's the wisdom, it's the storytelling, it's the narrative, it's the self-development. Well, these things mean that we have the tools, we have a great asset, but we haven't built anything yet. How do we actually make sure we get into this industry, hit the ground running, and succeed? Because most advisors fail in the first five years. They just don't make it. So let's dive into how to overcome that as our last step. I'm gonna tell you something I wish someone had really forced into me when I was just getting started. You are going to read so many books. You are going to watch so many videos. You are going to come across so many podcasts. You're gonna consume so much great content from all the different wisdom of the past and all these different textbooks. And over time, it's gonna inspire questions in your mind. I don't know how that works, or I don't know how this works. In addition to that, you're gonna come across things that inspire you. Wow, that idea really shifted my perspective about how to manage X or Y. Every single time you have an epiphany or a question in any of your studies, Write it down. Start to really dive into those things that make you curious and collect them. From there, write about them. If it's a question, find out the answer and write about how you found the answer and what conclusions you came to. If it's some piece of insight you found amazing that shifted your perspective, write that down, reflect on it. And what you're going to accumulate over time is, you guessed it, a bunch of opportunities for content creation. And now you might be thinking, oh no, I actually have to put myself out there. And the reality is yes. Between now and the time you're done your CFP, that's gonna be three or four years if you haven't started yet. Would you rather finish that process with nothing but your credential or with your credential and maybe a content platform of 20 or 30,000 followers? Maybe on Instagram, maybe a newsletter, maybe a blog, maybe a YouTube channel, whatever it might be. It is a foundational piece of this business that you put yourself out there. And if you start putting yourself out there consistently, four years down the line, you will not be hurting for clients. You will have all the business you need and more, okay? That's how it started for me, and in my experience, that is the best way to help it work for anyone else. 
I can't imagine anything more disappointing than doing your bachelor's degree, realizing it's not enough, doing your CFP, realizing it's not enough, doing all this self-learning, learning from all these great books and realizing it's still not enough. You have to eventually put yourself out there. You're still at ground zero. You're still making zero dollars after all those things and you have to put food on the table. So during that process of all the learning you're about to go through, create a ton of content and share it with the world. Share it on your social media, put it out there, write a blog. Even if you think nobody's listening, put it out there, put it out there, put it out there. Provide free value to other people by answering the questions you had or providing the insights that you learned through this entire process. And over time, if you do that for two or three or four years, you will build a base of followers. And from there, in your community or amongst your friends or online, you will have infinite opportunities at different jobs, you will have opportunities for new clients, you will come across different opportunities that might completely move you in a different direction. But all that being said, you will have some place to go that is better than where you are. And so that's the piece of advice where push comes to shove, right? You can't just sit in your room and study anymore. You can't just put off this adulthood thing. You can't just put off taking the risk because you actually have to eventually put yourself out there or none of this means anything anyways, okay? So why not get used to start doing that sooner? All in all guys, here's the deal. You have to get licensed, you have to get credentialed. That's going to involve a university degree, your SIE or your CSC, getting an internship, getting series six and seven, then working towards your CFP. That's credentials. From there, you're gonna be in the business, but it's not gonna be enough. You're gonna to need to do self-learning. You're gonna to need to build the real mental models and get a foundational understanding of investments, finance, taxation, the production of wealth. Lastly, you're gonna actually need people to talk about this with. If you just know all these things and you're not putting yourself out there, it's not going anywhere as a career at least. And so you need to start generating buzz about your specialty, about who you are, about what you're interested in by sharing great content that provides value for people and doing that unbelievably consistently for a very long time. That right there, those three things, is my formula for becoming a successful advisor. And other than that, it, the rest is basics. It's like, you have good hygiene, go to the gym, dress well, get a good barber. These sorts of things, just put yourself together. And with all these things I've talked about in the video, I think you have a good formula for becoming a successful advisor. So anyways, guys, this has been a lot. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this cleared up some of the questions on how to become a successful advisor starting from zero. And if you got any value out of it whatsoever, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.